These monks in northeast Thailand are on Bindabat, the daily dawn walk to receive their food offered by the villagers. Not all monks in Thailand keep strictly to the discipline prescribed by the Buddha, but these monks strive to maintain the original forest tradition of a pure and simple life. They're not allowed to possess money nor grow their own food. This ensures their total dependence on the lay community, so they can't cut themselves off in a spiritual cocoon. For the laity, Bindabhat is a way of paying respect to the discipline of the monks, and also a way of making merit, which many believe brings good fortune in this life and in future rebirths. About 50 monks and novices live at Wat Bapong, ranging from 13 years old to 70. Some may stay for many years, but the majority will only spend a year or two, for it's the Thai custom for men to be ordained for a short period of their lives. After returning from Bindabat, the monks eat their only meal of the day, which consists mainly of rice and vegetables. The day began at 3 a.m. with chanting, meditation, general chores and duties. It's now about 8.30. Until this time tomorrow, they'll consume only liquids. After the meal, they bow to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. The abbot, the venerable Ajahn Chah, has been in robes for 50 years. Here in the forest, you can learn to be in harmony with the way things are in nature. You can live happily and peacefully. Here, a monk is able to contemplate the nature of things. As he looks around him, he understands that all forms of life degenerate and eventually die. Nothing that exists is permanent. And when he understands this, he begins to become calm and serene. Ajahn Chah teaches that even the most mundane activity can be a form of meditation if carried out mindfully. Much of the day is spent making and maintaining their few basic possessions. Meditation can eventually become a constant practice. Monks are trained to be content with little, to eat only what they need, to sleep only when necessary, to be satisfied with what they have. This is the foundation for Buddhist meditation.
Buddhist monks don't practice meditation for selfish reasons. We practice in order to know ourselves, so that then we'll be able to understand and teach others how to live peacefully and wisely. This monk has been ordained for 15 years. He's respected not only for his skill in meditation, but also for his practical skills, his consistent mindfulness. Meditation doesn't just involve being at peace with the world. Confronting the self can be like walking into a raging storm. It's quite usual at first to despair, even to want to kill oneself. Some people think that a monk's life is a lazy and an easy one. If that's what they think, they should just try and see how long they can stand it. A monk's work is hard. He works to free his heart so that he begins to feel loving kindness, which embraces everything. He sees that all life has the characteristic of the breath. It rises and it falls. Everything that is born expires. So his suffering diminishes as he knows that nothing belongs to him. This novice is 14. He comes from a local village and has been in the monastery for several months. What's the hardest thing about being a novice? Being a novice isn't difficult, but being in the world is very hard. Why is that? Why? Why? Because there's a lot of problems involved in looking after buffaloes. I was tired with the world, so I wanted to come and live here to practice the Dharma. I used to have a wife, six children, buffaloes. All these I had to give up. I felt that coming to live here was more useful to myself and to others. As I experience the teaching of the Buddha, so I can pass it on to others. Discipline is a crucial part of the experience. The 227 rules which a monk has to observe are not ends in themselves, but stepping stones towards mental resolve. Shaving the head is a symbol of the renunciation of the world. This monk from London is one of several Western monks here. The life is very simple, daily life is very simple. And that if you look at the rules, they all seem very complicated. Um, which seems a bit of a contradiction. But in actual fact, they two work together because um, simplicity also involves always coming down into the moment, the moment which you're in, which simplicity helps you do that. And then the complication of the rules helps you do that more because you always have to be recollecting what you're doing. The day's activities are regulated by a bell. Twice a month it calls them to confession. They recite to each other the categories of offence. The most serious, which includes sexual intercourse, are punished by expulsion. Lesser offences incur various penances.
Of course, a monk is free to leave the order if he finds the discipline irksome. A monk learns to challenge his moods. Our aim is to become aware of everything that passes through our minds, knowing the greed, hatred, delusion. We watch these feelings, but we don't cling to them and follow them. We just watch them come and go. After the confession comes the Patimoka, the ritual recitation of the 227 rules. Occasional prompting is sometimes necessary. อย่างวัตสนตุอิมัสมิจะอุตุมหิสัตจะอุปสัทธะเอกาจะปวรณะอิมินาปะเคนะเอโกอุปสัทโธสัมปัตโตปัญจะจะอุปสัทธะเอก
This man used to own a string of bars and nightclubs. He's been so impressed by Ajahn Chah that he's abandoned all these in search of a more moral livelihood. Now he comes regularly to the monastery for advice, teaching, or to see if any work needs doing. Meeting Ajahn Chah has helped me to solve many problems which were causing me a lot of unhappiness and which I wasn't able to solve myself. I come to the monastery in the same way that if I'm physically sick, I go to the hospital. If there is any illness in my mind, I come here to find a cure. Whenever I begin to feel suffering, I come here to Ajahn Chah. He teaches me to come to terms with things and find a purpose in life. He explains to me about the nature of things, how suffering arises and how to end it, according to the teachings of the Buddha. Four times a month on Buddhist Sabbath days, the local community congregate at the monastery. Some travel from afar to hear Ajahn Chah's discourse. The day begins with chanting. To help people contemplate the true nature of the body, we have human skeletons in the assembly hall. Because when one doesn't understand death, life is very confusing. If our body really belonged to us, then it would obey our commands. But if we say, don't get old, or I forbid you to get sick, does it obey us? No. It takes no notice. We only rent this house. We don't own it. If we think the house belongs to us, when we have to leave it to die, we suffer. In reality, there is no such thing as a self. Buddha made a distinction between ultimate truth and conventional truth. The idea of a self is merely a convention. Foreigner, Thai, you, the interviewer, these are all conventions. In ultimate reality, there isn't anybody. There is only earth, fire, water, air, elements which have combined temporarily. We call the body a person, mine, but ultimately there is no me, there is only anatta, not self. Some of the lay community will sit up all night meditating on these themes with the monks. For a brief period, they are inspired and uplifted and become one with the spiritual struggle of the monks. To understand anatta, not self, you have to meditate. If you only intellectualize about it, your head will explode. Once you understand anatta, then the burden of life is gone. Your normal daily life with your family, your work, all will be much easier. You'll be at peace with the world. When we see beyond self, we no longer cling to happiness. And when we stop clinging, we can begin to be happy. Before I came here, I was like a boat without a rudder. Now Achin Chah has taught me what is right and what is wrong. I feel I have that rudder, 
and I can choose the right course. Originally, I had strong feelings inside, but they kept being... I, they, they were frustrated by my, my external conditions, or so I thought. But actually, that wasn't so, because these external conditions were helping this to grow, you know? And I feel that now is, is about the first time that I really feel I got a, a whole view of things, <laughs> if you see what I mean, in the right perspective that I wanted it for myself from, from this inner kind of feeling I had, which sometimes I thought was all wrong, because it wouldn't fit in with the outer life, you know, and, 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 and this kind of thing. And now I feel that uh, things have come to, together in the right way, in the right way. Before they've come together, but never, never so right, I would say. So, uh, that's not to say everything's all right, <laughs> by any means, but um, things, uh, I, feel, I feel right about things, basically. Yeah. Solid, solid inside. ถ้าห่วงก็ไปนิพพานไม่ได้เลยสิฮะต้องภาวนามาให้ห่วงพระนิพพานถ้าห่วงพระนิพพานก็ไปไม่ได้ไปพระนิพพานไม่ได้ shouldn't be concerned with nirvana or attaining nirvana if you are then that in itself will prevent you from gaining nirvana so what should a monk's main concern be ฉะนั้น the aim is to let go. Yeah. So you have to let go, but without striving to let go. ฉะนั้นต้องปล่อยว่างแต่ว่าไม่ไม่ควรจะปรารถนาการปล่อยว่างใช่ปรารถนาไม่ได้ปล่อยว่างปล่อยว่างไม่ปรารถนาสิ่